See, that's why there's not much power in gospel preaching anymore. Because we're too afraid to say things like that. Under the band, away with them to eternal destruction. Yet Christ redeemed us from that curse by having that pronounced upon Him. Thus He suffered outside the gates of the city. Now, I want to do something. I have gone into all the Old Covenant, the Mosaic Law, and the curses and pulled them out. Because what you have to understand is these curses were to fall upon the head of the covenant breaker. And that is you. And I want to show you now how these covenant curses, instead of falling upon you, fell upon the only covenant keeper there has ever been. And that is Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, In the book of the law, we discover that Moses is told to divide up the people of God. And they are to stand on two different mountains. Those that stand on Mount Ebal are to pronounce all the curses of God upon the covenant breakers, those who are disobedient to the law. And those who stand on Mount Gerasim are to pronounce all the blessings that should fall upon the head of the covenant keeper. Let's look at these curses, but as they apply to Jesus Christ when He was our sin bearer on that tree. He's on the cross and He cries out such an important statement that it is transliterated for us. My God, my God, Why have you forsaken me? And the answer from heaven, from the Father's throne, is this. The Lord, the Lord God Almighty, damns you. The Christ looks up to heaven and cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? No answer of consolation but only this, The Lord your God damns you. And then he goes on. Now these are all the curses verbatim. Divine judgment looked down upon the Christ while He was hanging on that tree and says, The Lord sends upon you curses, confusion, rebuke until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly. The Lord smites you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderment of heart and you will grope at noon. Is it any wonder to you why it became so dark at that time? You will grope At noon, as a blind man gropes in darkness with none to save you, the Lord delights over you to make you perish and destroy you, and you will be torn from the land. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The heaven which is over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you iron. You shall be a proverb and a taunt among the people." Let all these curses come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you would not obey the Lord your God by keeping His commandments and His statutes which He commanded you. Now think about this. The only covenant keeper, Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, when He took our sin upon Himself, He was treated as the one guilty. And the only covenant keeper is now treated as the single covenant breaker. And all the curses of the law from the throne of God are cast down upon His head. 
Let me keep going with the curses of the law. As Christ bore our sin upon Calvary, He was cursed as a man who makes an idol and sets it up in secret. That's the way the Father treated Him. He was cursed as one who dishonors his father or mother, who moves his neighbor's boundary mark or misleads a blind person on the road. He was cursed as one who distorts the justice to an alien, orphan, and widow. He was cursed as one who is guilty of every manner of immorality and perversion, who wounds his neighbor in secret or accepts a bribe to strike down the innocent. He was cursed as one who does not confirm the words of the law by doing them. You want to talk about the sufferings of Christ? Get all romantic about talking about the crown of thorns and the, the, the whip on His back. You don't understand the cross. That's not the pain of the cross. The pain of the cross is not what puny men did to the mighty Christ. The pain of the cross is what God the Father did to His only begotten Son. Some of you have never even heard such preaching. And yet you claim to be preachers of the Gospel. Conservative, fundamental, all those other terms. This is the true cross. There's a passage in Proverbs that says, Like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, so a curse without cause does not alight. So how do all these curses alight upon the Christ? The one... Isaiah calls the branch. There was no cause in him. Even his enemies could not find reason to condemn him. It was because he stood. As the old Baptist preachers used to say, he stood in your law place. He bore your guilt. He was condemned by a holy God as you ought to be. In order to satisfy justice, appease the wrath of God and make it possible for a holy, righteous God to forgive wicked men and yet still be holy and righteous. Now, I want to go on for a moment. Skip through some notes. Psalms 32, let me read it to you. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Get on the cross. And let's just turn this text around. Sin was imputed to Christ. How blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. To whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. But on the cross, sin was imputed to Christ. He was exposed before God and the hosts of heaven. He was placarded before men. The, the iniquity of you that He carried was not forgiven Him, but He was crushed under the wrath of Almighty God. That's what happened. 